electronegativity. Big word, small idea. What it really means is how big an attraction an atom has for a pair of electrons in a bond. Why should an atom attract a pair of electrons? The atom has a positive nucleus. Let's suppose this large atom has a small positive nucleus, a small positive charge. Let's suppose the small atom has a much bigger positive charge. It follows that the small atom with a big charge will have a larger attraction for these negative electrons than the large atom with a small charge. To try to convey this idea, we use arrows. A large arrow going in this direction implies a strong attraction towards a large positive charge. And a smaller arrow pointing in this direction implies a smaller attraction. It's a bit of a chemical tug of war. What it means is that when we have a couple of pretend atoms A and B, and they're being pulled in opposite directions, but with different amounts of strength, the shared pair of electrons will not be in the centre of the bond, they'll be offset to one side. In this example, towards the right-hand side, we have, this, we have the larger attraction. You might think, what does it matter? Does it really matter that these electrons are not evenly shared? Let's find out. There are three possibilities. We could have a situation where the electrons are evenly shared. Where would that happen? That would happen when the electronegativities of the two atoms are the same. That could happen, although it's not as common as you might think. For example, we could have the lengths of two hydrogen atoms obviously pooling with the same attraction, the same electronegativity. In this case, the atoms share the electrons. There are values in the data book for these pooling powers. Hydrogen has a pooling power of 2.1. Another bond which falls into this category, where the electrons are evenly shared, is a carbon-hydrogen bond. In this case, the pooling powers are marginally different. The difference is so small that it still counts as being evenly shared. Here's a much more common situation. Our two atoms have different electronegativities, much as I showed earlier. The atom on the right hand side has a stronger pull. In this case, as we said, the electrons lie off center. The consequence of this is that atom B, because it has a bigger share of these electrons, gets itself a little negative charge. This is the Greek with the delta, implying small. Likewise, A has lost out a little bit. B is being greedy, pulled the electrons away. A has a little positive charge. The, the bond is said to be polar. Polar covalent. By covalent, we're still sharing electrons, but not evenly. An example of a bond like this would be, for example, a hydrogen chlorine bond, where the two atoms have noticeably different attractions. In this case, the chlorine has a small negative charge, because it has more than the electrons, and the hydrogen small positive charge. Possibly the most important polar bond that you'll come across is the bond between hydrogen and oxygen. This is a bond that occurs in water, occurs in alcohols, occurs in carbohydrates, and a number of other substances. This bond has significant charges as a consequence of these different electronegativities. And finally, if we push this concept to a limit, we could have a situation where there's an extremely large difference in electronegativity. So great that this atom, with such a strong attraction, effectively steals both electrons to itself. A has lost an electron, becoming a positive ion. B has gained an electron, becoming a negative ion. This would be ionic. A couple of well-known examples of ionic. Sodium chloride, small pulling power on the sodium, large pulling power on the chlorine, and the most ionic bond of all, cesium chloride. No two atoms have a bigger difference in electronegativity than those two. Feeble little cesium matched against big powerful fluorine, no contest. The electrons are over beside the fluorine, giving the fluorine a negative charge and the cesium a positive charge.